Got the casing uh, ground off. Time to forge it down. I think I'll forge it down to about, uh, about an inch and three quarter and then re-square the billet. I am trying to make sure that I'm doing this stage right. Normally you re-square things on a 45 degree angle, but this billet I'm thinking about doing differently. So I'm re-squaring the billet here, and uh, I'm trying to get the pattern to, to do something unique I've never done before. Here's the corner of the billet right here. You can see how it's not centered. It's not centered with this, this new part of the bar I'm re-squaring. Normally I'd be freaking out because I try to get that right in the centers because I'm re-squaring on a 45 degree angle. But I was doing a lot less of an angle this time so it's way off center. I need to make this side match perfectly though. That's why I kind of need to take the handle off and stick it in the other way or something. I guess I'm just gonna have to take the handle off and uh, re-weld it on the other side. I can't handle this thing with tongs. I'll have to do that three or four times probably, I guess. So a lot of mosaics are based off of like re-squaring billets of steel. So right now, when we started that billet, we had those two pieces in the center. Like that. So they had all these layers in here that are kind of going straight, not really. And we had all these other pieces on the sides like that, right? So re-squaring is when you put the billet on a 45 degree angle, or in this case, I'm doing less of an angle, and then you forge it from the sides like that and uh, turn it back into a square again. And that makes it so the center part that center part is going like this, and then the other parts are like this. And you put four of those together. Once you four-way that, then you got like the center part is going like that, and then you got the squiggly bits on the sides that are going around here. And that makes like a, a mosaic there. We'll re-square it after I forge it down. Remember I forged it. Forge it down a little smaller first. We're gonna do the same process to get the pattern to look the same over here on this end of the billet. I got the same inch and three quarter stop in there. Put it up on an angle and start re-squaring it. Yeah, like this, right here. Re-square this part. I'd like to get this four-way one more time today and get it ready to be tile cut uh, tomorrow. Is what I'd like to do, but I got to get this drawn out and then uh, let it cool, grind it all clean, cut it up, you know, all that stuff. So there's a lot to do on it today. I want it to match. What I got going on over here already. Right? That's not bad. That match is pretty good down through there, I'd say, for doing it in two takes, huh? Now we're gonna forge it this way and turn it back into a square, and hopefully all the patterns, or all the uh, layers will be kind of going across the build on an angle, which will give us a nice, cool-looking mosaic when we go to four-way it again. Or four-way it for the first time. Yeah, this, this was 10 ways so far. So far the billet hasn't ripped apart. That's always a good sign. This uh, re-squaring the billet is really hard on the welds. Uh, like really, really hard. It just puts all kinds of shearing strength on them. Shearing strength? Shearing pressure. Yeah, that's it. Go you know, by these straight edges on the sides that we just made. Should be something like this. To get the scale off every once in a while so I can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to hold the fill it up square.
villa's way out of square, but I should be able to fix that with some of my squaring guys. Probably stick it through the forge and uh, work on this half. And it will fit, it'll fit my door now, at least it better. I can't wait to see how the pattern looks on this billet because I've never uh, I've never ten weighed a billet like this before. Put four strips on each side of a different mosaic pattern in the middle with two big pieces of that. I really really think it's going to be cool. A little tricky since I decided not to do a 45 degree angle. Uh, I just really wanted to pull over to the side on me. Just that ridge is way over on the side. all in one billet just so I could uh, get all this part as close as the same as possible as close to the same as possible and if you're doing two separate billets sometimes it can be hard to get the re-squaring to be uh, the same with both pieces. I'm just trying to straighten this billet out a little bit it doesn't need to be perfectly straight but it'll help at this stage and this thing's heavy the longer it gets the further out that weight gets too I think the next thing I might want to do is uh, lightly square it up in my squaring die and then we'll draw it out a little bit more because right now it's not very square. I love this part here. Dumping all the scale off this hot die. <laughs> ah, ah. My gloves are soaking wet from all the water I've been spraying on that handle and uh, apparently heat goes through wet leather a lot faster than it does dry leather. These are my squaring dies that dad made. They're technically made to square a bar about an inch and an eighth in diameter, but this bar is a little bigger, but it should should do the job to get the, the billet square. It might leave some funny marks kind of along the edges, but that'll be okay because we're going to draw it out a little bit more still anyway. Someday I'll have a whole set of drawing dies or squaring dies instead of just two of them. I have two inch and then that eight inch and an eighth. It'd be nice to have like all the sizes in like a half inch or quarter inch interval maybe. our final dimension is about an inch and a quarter. I gotta forge the rest of this down just a little bit more and then I'll run it all through the squaring die one more time. I can't even fit the whole thing in there twice now. I gotta do it in three heats. Is that how long it is? Oh yeah, I have a nice square bar here. Something that can be kind of painful sometimes is uh, I spray that handle off with water, and sometimes the water is running around right here, dripping off right onto my leg when I'm sitting there, and it's boiling hot, <laughs> like literally boiling. That can be kind of painful sometimes. Time to get the squaring guys back in. Square this build up. One last time and then uh, probably have to straighten the bar just a little bit. Then we can let it cool down and cut it up. Something that might help with these really massive billets is to make myself a, a bigger handle that I can really hold on to. Uh, I put my hand up here and then if I had this a lot longer then I might be able to really leverage it around where I want it. So maybe a little, a little bit longer handle. another press with some flat dies in it. If I had flat dies on the press, it'd save me at least three or four heats during that whole cycle. Time for flat dies. Flatten this thing out. Put the flat dies in. My dad and I made the uh, hydraulic press somewhere in the uh, 30 to 40 ton range. We built the whole thing for 800 bucks. 
including the hoses and fittings, and that was the most expensive part. We got the 10 horse, three phase motor and uh, pump assembly from a friend dad knew up in Illinois for like almost nothing, as well as the cylinder. And uh, the frame is made out of Sinclair gas station signs that were cut in half and welded back together. And I don't know what all we did to it, but yeah, it's mostly built from scrap metal and uh, and some parts that we got for almost nothing. So super affordable to make our own, and uh, we're lucky to have some connections to have the uh, cylinder and pump and everything for a really good price. Let this bad boy cool and uh, start grinding it off, grind all the scale off and uh, cut it up into four pieces and four weigh it. Now, if you'd excuse me, time for a thumbnail. Whoa. I can't get it all in the shot. I can't do anything about that. Shutting down the forge. Well, it's already shut down now. Shutting down the press, getting ready to take these earplugs out, take these gloves off, and go uh, take a little break, maybe put some ice on my wrist. Man, my left hand is killing me. That billet was so heavy, so much weight on my wrist. Hopefully the pattern did what I wanted it to. I wanted the pattern to go across the billet, not on a 45 degree angle, but a, a little bit less of an angle. And uh, I've never tried to do that before. I've always gone for 45, and I didn't want the pattern going corner to corner, though. We'll see how it looks. Hopefully the pattern is just going a little bit less than corner to corner. Uh, the reason I wanted that to happen was because uh, if the pattern's going corner to corner, it'll it'll get closed in as the pattern's going down the blade. But I didn't want it to completely close the centers in. I, I, I just wanted it to get close to closing in and then come close so there's like these two squiggly lines that don't quite connect. They might connect a little bit and I'm okay with that, but I was just trying to uh, make it connect a little less, if anything. Let's check out the forge, see how it's holding up after fixing up that back door and we've done some really long cycles, forging cycles in there. Had it running for a few hours at a time. And the back, the back area looks really good that we redid. I was super worried about it too because I was using some different uh, refractory that I don't normally use. And uh, it seemed super crumbly after it was dried but maybe, uh, maybe getting fired by the forge helps set it up harder. Because it is looking really, really good so far.